since the fluorescent lamps are being phased out now, I figured this was a good opportunity to tear down a dead PL13 lamp and show you guys what's in it. Well, we still can, because these things are not going to be around much longer. Yeah, we're going to have fun with a dead fluorescent bulb. Now, this thing's been in use for forever. It's probably 20 odd years old. Um, there's been only been a few of these that have been replaced over the years. I've got three of them. They used to be in my hallway, and now I, I upgraded the hall lights probably, I don't know, 10 years ago to LED. Well, just conventional bulbs with LEDs in them, with the filament type LEDs. And then these three that were in the hall were sent up to the uh, ensuite. I made up a little wooden board, um, varnished it, and mounted the fixtures on there, and replaced a rusting out old bar lamp. And um, yeah, this one's finally popped. So, now don't do this at home, boys and girls, because I've got this on my dim bulb tester. If you see, if I short this together, it'll just turn the light on. So this is a resistive load, but it should be interesting to see this thing flash away. It won't light because it's blinking on and off, but it should make my dim bulb start blinking. Unless it burned out. There we go. I'm going to try something. I probably just burned the last of the filaments out. This thing's been flashing for uh, this thing's been flashing for a while. I figured I'd open up the base and uh, get that little starter bottle out of there. It's got a it'll have a little neon bulb starter type in here if I can get this off without breaking the glass. I don't want to break the glass, that's for sure. This thing's got mercury in it. We don't need to have mercury uh, going everywhere. Not that it has much mercury. It's got a tiny bit of mercury, these lamps. These type of lamps use a mercury amalgam, not a liquid mercury. So it's solid at room temperature and it's held in a little uh, a little holder right at the filament that gets heated up when it preheats the lamp. These lamps are actually starting to get harder to get because they're phasing out fluorescent lights everywhere. And they're just getting harder and harder. There's a there's an LED replacement that will that will replace these type of lamps, but uh, I walked into the store and they wanted like $24.95 for an LED replacement and the fluorescent one was only like $7.99 so obviously I wanted to stick, keep it on the fluorescent one for now at least as long as I can still get them this should, this, this should lift off and we should see in the bottom here the starter Maybe I gotta cut the pins. That's a possibility. The pins might be holding it, so we'll just break off the pins. Yeah, that's what it is. It's the pins that are holding it. Now we can remove it, and here is the integrated starter. That was part of every fluorescent fixture in the past was a starter. If I connect my little power supply leads through the dim bulb through this it should make the light bulb blink on and off connect it up to power and the little neon light lights up it heats up the bimetallic strip you can see it glowing away there so this is a neon glow bulb with the bimetallic strip and when the neon lamp lights it heats up the bimetallic strip which closes and closes the circuit that's what starts these up that completes the circuit to heat up the preheat filaments and then when it opens the inductive kick from the ballast fires the lamp in this case because the lamp is shot the starter is still working it's making my light bulb turn on and off like this now that's just a light bulb that's in series with the uh, the lamp so I'll draw the schematic for this just to help you guys understand exactly what's going on because I don't want someone hooking up a, a, a power cord to one of these things and then wondering why it explodes and it would if I if I did not have this on my dim bulb as soon as that made contact you'd have a dead short and it would explode so you, you can't do that unless you're doing it the way that I'm doing it here for experimentation only so my dim bulb as you know the schematic for the dim bulb is as follows. So you got your, your power, and I've got a I've got a switch here, and then this goes to the outlet. 
This one goes to the neutral side and then the hot side. And the hot side goes like that to the switch. And then I've got a 100 watt light bulb in this case here, a lamp. So basically what I'm doing is I'm connecting, I'm plugging in my cord and it's got the two alligator clips on it. And I've got them clipped onto the wires that are going to the, the, the fluorescent starter. I don't even know what the symbol for a starter is, but we'll, we'll draw that. That's what's going on. If I were to close this switch here and provide full power across here, this would explode. So don't do it. I'm doing it just to show you guys what will happen and see the starter here still works and this would probably work for quite a while until until this failed itself this would continue to work and that's why these lights when they burn out they'll just sit there and flash on and off what's happening is the starter bottle is trying to start the lamp it's preheating the electrodes which are worn out at this point as you can see they're all black it fires the lamp the lamp fires but it can't sustain operation because the filaments here that have got the coating of the rare earth minerals that allow them to emit electrons have worn out and the lamp extinguishes that again now applies voltage across here it, it uh, turns on the neon lamp the neon lamp heats the the bimetallic strip up and once the bimetallic strip heats up it then closes completes the circuit and repeats the process heats the filaments up the bimetallic strip because there's no longer current flowing through it cools down it springs back and um, it fires the lamp and if the lamp stays on of course the voltage across here would drop to nothing because you've got low impedance through the tube and that would continue to operate the lamp until you turned it off some of you may also wonder why is there a capacitor across here and the answer to that is simple that's to reduce interference to radio when the lamp is starting it would it cause a static, especially on an AM radio or on old analog television, you get lines across the screen. But as the lamp was starting, you'd hear pop, 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 pop on the AM radio until the lamp started. That was just to suppress and also probably to save the contacts inside here, even though they're in an inert gas. They're not going to really uh, deteriorate that much, but that was to basically to suppress any interference to radio. Now this starter is still good. It could be used to rebuild a starter, a fluorescent starter for preheat lamps. So that part is still actually good. Where will it pop? We're at 13, 14 volts now. Ah, oh, it popped at 15. Catch you later.